Welcome back to Making Good Choices Monday. I'm Becky Amio, and today I decided to do something a little bit different. Actually, I'm filming this intro after I've already shot the video. I decided to go outside and tell you the story about how I learned how to trim feet. And I tell you the story while I'm trimming a three-year-old stud's feet. And I kind of, you know, I don't give you a really specific story like I have in the past of how I had to learn how to make a good choice, but I do give you some tidbits in there of some things that could have been really bad in my lifetime and some mistakes that I have made. And just if you watch for them, you'll see them in there. Good little training tips and good little safety tips. Anyway, it, the video is shot completely outside. It was on a really, really windy day. So there is some wind in the background. I tried to do my best to play with the audio and get the wind out of the background, but it's tough. Um, I used my Bluetooth microphone to tell the whole story while I was working on the horse. So you're gonna hear some sniffles, you're gonna hear heavy breathing as I'm picking up the horse's leg and I'm rasping. But uh, you do get a full story while I'm trimming feet on a colt. And anyway, um, hope, hope you enjoy it. Hope you make good choices today. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or Settle in on your commute to work and enjoy the show. Thanks. So it's really stinking windy today, and I don't know if I have any decent weather coming up. I'm going to go ahead and trim feet right now on this guy. He is coming three. I started him this fall. I got about 30 rides on him. Um, I've never done a real full... 100% complete trim on him. I've only just knocked the big stuff off and leveled him up a little bit. I don't think I've even rasped his feet. So that's kind of how I do it with these guys. Um, you know, he hadn't been handled up until this last fall. He was gentle and friendly, but he wasn't handled. He hadn't been tied or nothing. Um, so I just kind of knocked the big stuff off as they let me knock it off. Um, so we'll see how he does. The reason I untied him there is if he starts to feel a little claustrophobic and he needs to leave the scenery, um, he can get out of here and hopefully I won't be involved when he decides to leave. So, hold on a sec, bud. So I started trimming feet, oh, I guess it was about, I think I was about 24, oh, maybe maybe 22, because um, I know I was in the middle, I'm 23, I was probably about getting in the middle of getting my master's at Cal Poly Pomona, and um, I'd, I kind of had wanted to know, but I had a boyfriend at the time that was kind of learning how to do it, and and I, I just thought he could do it, and but there was still part of me that wanted to be able to do it and be able to be able to do it for myself if I needed to. Um, and I'm not going to fight him if he wants to pull on me like that. Um, if he were an older horse that knew better, um, probably would just a little bit, but these youngsters, I don't get in too big of a fight with them about their feet. Um, so anyway, I had this boyfriend that was trimming stuff for us, and he was kind of learning how to shoe. Okay. And meanwhile, I had had a couple of horses in training. Hey. Okay. Uh-uh, no. And I had a shoer there to uh, shoe them for those owners. And one horse was really unbalanced. Like very, very obviously unbalanced. And I'd asked him about it and what he could do to fix it. And... I thought it was something that could be fixed. Hey, teddy bear, no, lay down. And I thought it was something that could be fixed. 
it was it was a balancing issue and he proceeded to get pretty mad at me and said he wasn't going to let some little girl tell him how to do his job and was kind of crabby about it and because nobody had questioned his work before but they continued to allow this guy to continue to shoe their horse really unbalanced like that <clears throat> pick up all my pieces here so my dog doesn't keep eating them so when I went to pick up my pieces the, from all the trimmings and take my coat off realized that uh, my camera had stopped rolling and I had lost part of my recording so we didn't get him putting his foot up on the stand so I'm going to finish my story here so anyway so this guy he didn't uh, didn't like that I was questioning his work on this foot that was clearly really unbalanced um, and what was happening is the foot was rolling over and it was kind of kind of bulging on one side and you could see all up around the coronet band where it was longer and bulging and a lot of pressure and you know anybody who kind of knew what they were looking at could tell that there was a problem but he'd never been questioned before and he kind of just kept on trimming the way he'd always trimmed and I just questioned him just like hey can you fix that and it turned into um, I'm not going to let a little pipsqueak tell me how to do my job. So, um, I decided I was going to learn how to do it myself. I wanted to be self-sufficient. I didn't want to have to pay somebody to do the job. I wanted to know how to do the job. I wanted to be able to do it for myself. Um, I wanted to be able to save money. Um, that year, my boyfriend bought me an apron and tools, a set of nippers, a shoeing stand, a hoof knife. I still have the apron to this day, but I don't always use it because I feel like on these younger horses, I could get tangled up in it pretty quick, and it's not super, super safe on this young stuff. Um, so I don't always wear my apron, so I don't totally look the part here. I apologize. Um, so that year when I was in college, um, I ended up taking a farrier science class at Cal Poly Pomona. Got to work with one of the best horseshoers in the world, Mike Ciboldi. Also got to work with Rich Mervin. I'm going to let him down. He just gave me a little teeny, teeny uh, message that he was done with me holding it up like that. So rather than fight him, I'll just let him put it down. Um, so I got to work with Mitch Rich Mervin, and there was another guy there that uh, was really knowledgeable and got to learn how to use my tools and really got to learn the anatomy of the foot and the whole upper extremity and all of these tendons and ligaments and bones that make up that lower limb on the horse, and it was incredibly eye-opening. Um, from there, I started working on my own. And by this point, I think I'd had about, oh, I think I had about four horses of my own. I had a rotten little 13 two-hand pony. I had my Arabian mare, a quarter horse mare. I had an Arabian gelding. I think I might have had one other one. Um, and I just started working. And, you know, there were days that it would take me four hours to trim one. And, and it wasn't because they weren't behaving and weren't standing still. It was because... Um, my foot or my hand couldn't use a foot hoof knife. I, I wasn't strong enough to use the hoof knife. And that took a while. And still to this day, I'm not super strong with my hoof knife. I try to avoid using it at all costs. Um, I try to get as much as I can out with the nippers. And um, I try to do mostly rasping and keep up on them enough that I don't have to get super aggressive with them. Um, of course, the stuff that's never been trimmed, I do have to get pretty aggressive because sometimes they're wearing a set of snowshoes by the time I get around to working on their feet, or they have skis on the front and back. 
Um, so I, I just slowly started that way. It was very organic. Anything that I took in training, I worked on the feet, usually under the tutelage of my boyfriend that was getting better and better at it, and he was going to clinics and taking lessons, and then whatever horses that came in for training, and I'm trying to remember, but I think there might have been a couple of shoers that did let me go work with them occasionally, or they worked with me while they were putting shoes on my own horse, um, and truly that's where I learned how to nail a shoe on as well, um, so that's kind of how that happened, and then I got to a point where I, uh, where I, picking up true means, I got to a point where I was actually taking on clients and usually backyard horse people that were, you know, just wanting to get their horse trimmed, were willing to let me work on it. I was reliable. I came when I told them I was making the appointment to come and work on their horse. You know, a lot of shoers aren't. Um, they're not that reliable. So I was reliable and I came and worked on them. And that's kind of how I got the experience. And then I, I really tried to select my personal horses um, for really good feet so that I wouldn't have to put shoes on them. And there never would be a need for a shoer to come around. And I was the quote unquote broke you know, horse trainer and broke horse owner and and the less I had to spend for care and maintenance, the better off I was and the more money I could spend to go down the road to a barrel race or to a clinic or take riding lessons myself or buy a new piece of tat that was going to help me be better at what I was doing. So, so I did that for a long time and when I moved to South Dakota... I realized everybody trimmed their horse's feet here, and that was just part of the job. When you take a quilt in for training, they expected you to trim the feet on it, and most of the time, it had never had its feet handled before. Most of the time, they'd never had a shoe route to work on its feet. Trimming their feet was just part of part of the first 30 days. Okay, I thought I'd give you a quick before and after of what that front left looks like and the front right and the difference in them. Let's go around over here. Let's see, that's not a very good view there. Let's get it over here. It's a bad time of day. We got too many shadows and light. Okay, I'm going to try setting up the camera in a different spot and see if I can get a better shot of me working on this other hind here. Okay, I tried putting you in a different spot so you could see what was going on. And the lighting would still be diff decent and... Um, where the hell did I put my hoof pick? Right here. Where the lighting would still be decent and you could see me and the wind wouldn't blow the camera and the tripod out over. So yeah, um, you get the horse for 30 days and it was expected that you had the feet worked on and you were riding it within the first few days so you got your 30 days and you know ultimately you know they they really wanted 30 rides but kind of hard to get that in a month um, without giving, you know you got to go to give them a day off and whatnot. Um, so it's kind of unrealistic. Get out of here. Um, I... This guy's got hard feet. So, you know, at the first ranch that I worked at, I was working at, on those horses for long enough that I had time. I had time to get to know them, time to get to handle their feet. Um, but the next ranch I worked for, well, I had to get it done, you know. Um, and that was a little frustrating. Boy, I had to be on those horses in the first three days 
you know, rarely took more than a week to get on them. If I got them in on a Sunday, boy, by that following Thursday, Friday, I better be riding them. Um, and that didn't give me, get out of here, didn't give me a whole lot of time to get to know them. And oftentimes, when they were unloaded off the trailer, they were not very friendly, they were not very gentle. They were wearing a halter, but that sure didn't mean that they were halter broke. So, um, I did that for a whole year, um, working on horses like that. Well, I did it for longer than that, but at that particular ranch, I worked for them for a year, working on stuff like that. Um, and, uh, that'll get you hurt. I got hurt a lot. And when I met JD, you know, his dad said, you know, why don't you come live here? And you can do it your own way. Do work on as many horses as you want to, and you could take as long as you want, and uh, do whatever you want. And um, I took him up on the offer. Um, just picking up all my pieces again, because otherwise, at one o'clock in the morning, I will be awakened by the sound of a dog throwing up. So I'll get these out of the way. So yeah, I like to take quite a bit more time getting to know these horses before I get underneath them. And I do have a really strong belief that that uh, Teddy Bear, go lay down. I do have a really strong belief that if you can't get underneath them, you have no business being on their back. Um, and you can really tell how reasonable and agreeable a horse is going to be by how good they are about having their feet handled. Come on, bud. Back up just a little bit. Teddy? So, and like I said, this guy, this is just his third time being trimmed, and the first two times were just knocked the big stuff off. This is the first time I've actually rasped on him and made him hold it up for a little bit longer. And Miss Teddy Bear isn't usually down here helping me like this. But they all got to get used to it sometime. And, you know, I just keep learning about the foot. And what I really enjoy learning about is what different climates do to the foot. Um, my good stud horse is down in Alabama right now, and it's a very humid, moist environment, and he's out on pasture. And when he comes home in May, and he did this last year, when he comes home in May, his foot's kind of like a pancake, and it's really flat and flared out. And then he gets in this soil, and he basically gets dry lotted here. He doesn't get put in a pasture here. So being in the dry lot, it makes his foot get really conical shape, and and that flare comes out pretty quick. It takes me a few months of trimming, but the flare comes right out on him. So it'll be fun to see what his feet look like when he comes back this May. So I really enjoy that. But I still appreciate a horse that just has a good foot that that is easy to maintain, doesn't require a lot of maintenance. Um, you know, I. I have I used to be very pro barefoot on everything. And I have owned some of my personal horses, have had outstanding feet and never did need shoes. Um, like I said, I selected for feet that didn't need shoes. Um but what I find is with all of the changing environments, when we show we're walking across hard parking lots when we go into river bottoms, we're going across rocky river bottoms. And when we're going to Brandings, we're going in whatever terrain you could possibly imagine. And, you know, I just want to protect their foot, so I will put shoes on. And always put shoes on the front, depending on what kind of... Hey, you guys, knock it off. And depending on what kind of... 
people what kind of job I'm asking of them and what kind of quality foot they have. I will put shoes on behind, and now I do take them to a guy for that um, here locally. And by the time my horses go to him, they're pretty darn well behaved to have their feet worked on. Um, I don't take anything to him that's going to waste his time or going to potentially hurt him. I want to make sure I have all that stuff worked out here. I don't want to take some to him that I'm worried about hurting him because, A, that's his livelihood, that's his family. Um, and I want him to do a really good job on my horse, and if my horse isn't well behaved, he can't do a good job on any of them. So I make sure all that stuff's taken care of before we go there to him. So I've worked on their feet quite a bit before they get to that stage. So we're going to go back to this front foot again, and I'm going to untie him for this again, just in case. With the hind feet, I feel like I can get out of the way if they decide to get upset about something. But with the front, man, if they decide to sit back and I'm bent over in this position on them, man, I don't want to be underneath them. I just don't. I want them to be able to leave because most of the time they just want to leave. You know, they want to get the heck out of here. They don't want to stay right on top of you. So if they have the ability to leave, it's less of a chance of them landing on you. And knock on wood, I have not been hurt that bad trimming feet. So, again, I, I don't fight. Um, if they decide they don't want me to have their foot that day, I'll figure out another way to get that foot or... We'll go back to the round pen and make life a little bit more difficult for them until they want to give me that foot. Now, I know some folks were asking me about handling feet the first time on a young colt, and that video is coming. Um, so I thought a lot about that and what I want to show on that video. Um, but since I was, today I was gonna trim feet because we had this wind I figure I'll I'll do that on another day um, when I don't have the wind because all of them they really don't particularly like or at least I don't like to work on them and try to train on stuff in this wind sometimes when you're throwing lead ropes around or or saddle pads or saddles up and around and things flip in the wind. I, I don't want to mess with it. Um, here, bud. So, again, you know, you, you kind of see how reasonable they're going to be by how well they let you take their foot away from them. Boy, you know, that's a vulnerable thing is to let you take their foot away from them. Because everything they've been taught is they need those feet to get the heck out of here. Feels like he wants to pull it, so I'm just going to let him take it before we get into a fight. Teddy bear, drop it. Thank you. Ugh, I'm going to pick up pieces. Before I have dogs throwing up. Hi. Hi, bud. Get up here. Come on. So, that little thing that I just did right there, you have no idea what a big deal it is to be able to do that on horses. And I know we're not supposed to do that, but um, there was a time when I was riding stuff, I was literally on its back and riding it, but I couldn't walk underneath its neck. Didn't like me walking underneath its neck. But I was getting up on its back. And now, how incredibly stupid was that? I don't know why I didn't get hurt worse back then. For some reason, somebody was looking down on me because I should have gotten hurt a lot more than I ever did. Bring him back up here, get him back on a better spot. Go on, Rocky. Come on, bud.
we'll just go back to the nippers again. And it's been a while since I've done this guy's feet. You know, um, I stopped riding him here, oh, maybe about a month ago. Let him have a little break and left him alone. And he's still been up like he hasn't been turned out in the pasture. He's been still in my arena turned out, um, just hanging out with the rest of the boys. But um, that way I can get to his feet and work on him like this. Please don't put your nose near me. Um, that way I can get to his feet and work on him when they need to be worked on. But I've kind of been letting him be a horse. And I like to work on their feet when it's relatively dry. And I've, And even though we're considered in a drought right now, it's still been a blessing to still have dry ground and not and not be working in snow because he wouldn't be getting his feet done right now if we were working in snow. So there's quite a bit of foot there. I'm taking a lot off. And then I'll be able to leave him alone until shoot March. And hopefully by then, you know, we'll be starting to thaw out. I mean, I'm sure we'll have another blizzard or two, but... We'll be starting to think about thawing out. And he'll have this really good experience under his belt. And the next time around will be that much better. Pick up all my pieces so my dogs don't eat them. Nope. All right, bud. Let's go to rasping. Come here. Come back up there. Come on, bud. And the other thing is, this is a huge improvement from where he was at. He's not going to a horse show next week or anything. You know, we're just trying to help him out a little bit, have good experiences. So one day when it does matter and we need to do a really, really good job on his feet to go to the show or or sell him or whatever we're going to do with him, you know, he's had all these good experiences. And I'm the only one that's handled his feet. I'm the only one that's handled his feet on this whole place. JD might have picked him up a few times when he was first starting to halt or break him. But I've got to make damn sure that these are really good experiences because if he's not good for me, he sure as heck not going to be good for anybody else because I've made it a bad experience. You know, I don't want to be thumping on him or making him crabby or, um, you know, making him upset and making this a bad experience for him. You know, I, I want him to know that, hey, getting his feet worked on, make him feel better, and, you know, he gets taken care of and and all that. Because um, after, you know, before I started trimming on him, before I started recording, I did brush him and run my curry over him and made sure he felt all right. I'm going to put my nippers over here. Come here, bud. you got to come closer. Okay. So here's another moment of truth here, putting it up on the stand. This is always a scary thing when they get it up on the stand the first time. You know, having their foot taken away from them up front. Come on, bud. Come on. All right. Let's take it forward. Uh-uh. Teddy bear, get out of there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You, go lay down. Down. Hey, no. Come here. No, no, no. Come here. Come on, bud. Come here. Uh, on over. Rocky, get out of there. You lay down, teddy bear. Okay, we'll try this again. You're fine, bud. Come on, buddy. Come on. Up. Okay. That's 
going to put it up on our stand. All right. Good boy. Let's see how well he tolerates this. This seems to be pretty good. We're going to finish strong. No, no, no. Bring it back. That's a good boy. Hopefully finish up with me placing it down. Come here, bud. Set it back down nicely. And voila, we are done. I'll take you guys around with the camera and show you my finished job here. So you can take a look at his feet. Um, sure appreciate you watching. For those of you that stuck around for the whole thing. Um... This is one of Lowing Ranch's coming three-year-old stud prospects I've been working on. Um, make sure you hit like and subscribe and ask me any questions down in the description or not down in the comments. Um, appreciate you watching, and I hope you guys make good choices and have a great rest of your day. All right, here's the finished foot. Let's take a look at those hinds. Best rasp I've ever, but hey, better than they were.